Masters Espo 2022, Group A, Sprout and Ants both in a really, really good spot. Well, Ants in a far better spot after being up to a no after their first two games. Sprout, they lost one, they won one, and now we're back on Ancient with number three. Back, we're underway, and well, Stair needs to get out of there. Can't afford to stop. As right now, Ants do not spot. Stop. They explode over that site. And now Sprout have to think about how they want to go about this retake. Well, Siphon needs to be a little bit careful. He peeks in towards the cave and there's four players on the other side. Slacks over with a quick double. Now, puts the Ants boys in a little bit of trouble, especially with that smoke down as well. Two players on the other side of it. Valdez won them. And well, Lonix is just going to try and stick with no kit. Refresh is going to try and hold from him. The swing comes out. Lonix has to get off. He's going to be taken off oh. it from Refresh at least. As now he will go for the defuse, but running out of time. Dia just needs to run out and just needs to get him off it. He will do so. Refresh finds the kill, but it's not going to be enough. No kit, no chance. And pick up the T-Pistol. Knife him down, boy. I'm happy about that, but still, Sprout don't really win the round in the end. That was a great round for Mans, you know, really pacey, really quick. Uh, it was a good approach from Sprout as well going into the retake. I like the way that they realized that the roller coaster was coming in from Mans, so they kind of just gave them the space to work with. They're like, okay, we just got to contain you. We can let you onto the bomb site, but we're not going to let you have anything more from that. Still, though, a force buy coming in. Refresh going to be able to go for an M4 here thanks to his knife endeavors towards the B-bomb side. Unfortunately for them, that's going to be the only rifle. Well, unless you count the scout of Slacks as well. And the only rifle is right. He's going to be able to pick up not only one, but two kills towards middle early on. No problem for Refresh in the early instances of this round. But Ants will still get a bomb plant at least. Everybody going to make their way through CT and try and retake. Siphon's picked up that M4, but Madden's taking it out of his hands. Madden with three. That's absolutely beautiful. And Ants now definitely do have a chance in this round. They have the advantage, in fact. As Madden spots out the scout player. No idea where Stair is. He's the only unknown entity of this round. But Ants will have their sneaky suspicions that he might be close in the cave. And well, Dia will take him down. Madden lo might look to find this kill onto Slacks, but Slacks will not give him a chance. Needs to save. Armor, a scout, and a smoke is an awful lot to bring into this next round. If he can, tag onto Dia. Still needs to be very, very careful, but nobody is going to run at him. They're going to let him save. He'll bring it into the next round at least. But Ants will go into it with another round in favor of them. A great anti-force coming up. Well, the anti-eco coming up in this one. A great anti-force in the previous one for men. We spoke about their conversion rate and, you know, the fact that they've been winning a lot of their pistol rounds. The stats are just going up. They were on 42.5% uh, pistol round one uh, in the past three months. I bet that after today, it's going to be a hell of a lot higher because... They've won their last three pistol rounds and they've converted every single one of them. And their conversion rate was already above 70%, which is, you know, uh, quite impressive, especially with how many teams actually struggle in that endeavor. But again, Ants not really crumbling. They've been really good at embracing the BO1 pistol conversion thing. Oh, that's a nice shot from Slacks. He is out of the equation, not really having the best time of his life towards the B-bomb side, but that's not really going to stop Ants from committing to that same bomb side later on. Utility in, trying to bait out any counter uter from the CT side. No such available, but... Oh, Slacks. Slacks. What is Slacks doing? <laughs> what is Slacks doing? Oh my god! That's unholy! Oh, what? Slacks. Oh, he just slacked on them. Oh, <laughs> slacks the ace. No. With the scale. That's one of the nastiest things that you can do to them. Oh, behave. Oh, yeah, we didn't even get to see it from his point of view. What was no that? No way. Oh, you know, that, that's one of those moments. That That's just going to the highlight reel straight away. Make a clip of it, share it everywhere. Reddit, please. Oh. What in God's name was that? That is absolutely ridiculous. And he just goes for the insta upgrade onto the, the AWP. I mean, just use the scout. 
Just use the scout. Like, you're good enough to use it. Why not? That's one way to get your first round for Sprout. And Ents are kind of definitely scratching their heads at that one, thinking, well, what has happened? I've absolutely no idea what's going on there. But all I know is we've lost our first round. Now, Ents. And we, did, we didn't catch a glimpse of it as well. We could just see him just popping heads and just looking at the kill feed. We can Imagine see the it. reactions on his teams, by the way, oh, as well. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of those rounds, especially if you're the A anchor. Imagine you're, I don't know, you're Xiphon towards Donut, and you just see the kill feed, you look at it, you're like, okay, nice, 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 and you say that like five times. Literally. And then just maybe scream it the last time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's once again, gonna try and explore up towards this B site. Dia finds that opening kill, it's there to go down. He was spammed on through. Madden tries to swing through cave, but refresh on top of the box. He's gonna be able to find not one, but a double as well. And he is still alive, but Snappy with a slow peek with that Tech 9 takes him out of the equation now. And that's an AK picked up that Snappy can wield for the moment. The bomb planted quite open here. Smokes will go down as Sprout go in and commit to this retake. Bomb is going to be stuck here by Lawnix. He has to get off it now, but eventually taps it one more time. And they might push through the smoke to try and get him off it, but they're not going to be able to defuse pulled off. Snappy eventually takes him down, but it is too little too late it's 2-2 two, two, and we're leveled up yeah a lot of damage done there on the spam through the smoke and through the wall i'm sorry i'm, I'm still bamboozled by what we've seen from slacks in the previous round i'm not gonna lie i can't really think about this round but that that, that wasn't holy but yeah it's uh it's still decent friends i mean they, they get a bomb plant yeah you lose the round but you still do the damage you get away with the money you're gonna be able to reinvest once again good for sprout that they managed to get the round on the back of the previous one I mean, you can at least do that for him after what he's done in the previous round. But now Wentz will try and switch up the approach a little bit. Slags, though, moving around. He doesn't actually spot the T player on the other side, but oh, he's got a deep flash lined up. Siphon needs the right timing, though. Dia looks to clear him out. Siphon will find the first. Not able to get a second. Refrag, very important for Ents' chances in this round. And does pull a little bit of rotation across the map. It brings Stair in towards middle, just to keep his eyes over. At least Lonix solo towards B. So Sprout might go for a little bit of information here. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to push in, they're going to clear middle, and they're just going to make sure that they have control of the B laneway as well. A stair will jump up. He's going to try and hold it himself, or at least just get a little bit of information so Lonix can be better prepared as Right now, Ents are going to walk on through. Oh, that is ridiculous for Madden. Stair didn't get a chance. And now, Lonix, he doesn't really have a lot of chances to try and stop this at all. He might have to just wait it out through the smoke. Comes some Pius and Lonix will take him down at least. It's a 3 versus 3. It's a post plan situation on B once again. Who's going to take the lead? Low and X just jumping around the smoke. Valda and Snappy, that's going to be a really tough hold. Flash is in. One player is still stuck towards the back of the side. Valda, he spotted the Lurg, but he's going to be all alone. Requires a 1 versus 3 here. And refresh, he just needs to make sure that Valda doesn't move. Is to hatch onto the, onto, onto the first one. AWP going to be holding the line, and Slax lands the shot. Defuse is going to come through as well for Law and X. That's going to be a third consecutive round on the CT side for Sprout. By the way, did you know the story behind the nickname of, of Law and X? No. Because we've been calling him Lonix for a long time, right? Apparently, he is a big FNX fan. So he just took the first three letters of his name and then put the NX. So that's why you, you kind of read it like Law NX. Okay, okay. And the other theory that I have is that he is, he is the son of Launders and FNX as well. But that's an unconfirmed one. That's kind of like oh, my that's, suspicion. That's a conspiracy. Yeah. What have you been up to, Landers, huh? I mean... Yeah, I bet he enjoyed his stay in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, moving on. Well, a little bit of a discussion happening between the two teams there as spread to have the advantage. And invest... Very lightly into this next round. Snappy and Dia, though, are actually going to bring out a few Galils here and there. So it's a little bit of a half-full investment, so to speak. Madden 
Gonna try and get up close to Donut if he can. It's gonna be an ace split here. Madden might catch Siphon off guard completely. If he goes now, he definitely will. He's heard the steps making his way through, and Siphon gonna be completely blindsided by that Mac 10. Look, nicely done. Slacks with that AWP has found the first though, but he needs to be smoked off, and they need to make sure that they don't peek into his crosshair. But no smoke means the Slacks can walk on through and find yet another kill on tip top form now. The upper from the spread side and some pious he's trapped on default and slacks knows this he's waiting for him to peek right into him oh misses the shot but lonix will have him covered valde goes down from behind and that is going to be a fourth round on the board for sprout and they survive with four as well yeah great sequence once again from law and X getting the double kill on and everybody's actually contributing to that ct side right even though madden does manage to take down one off guard and they get the bomb plant once again. Slack's just holding on the line. And they haven't really given a lot of time to ends to feel comfortable in those pulse plant scenarios. And this is something I like about Sprout. I feel like being so proactive in the pulse plant is uh, really giving you a lot of possibilities. And, you know, it gives you a bit of an advantage, obviously, especially against a team like Ends that has so many, uh, you know, things planned for the pulse plant. As you pointed out, Valda was going on for a bit of a lurk. If you let him get closer, he could be dangerous. If you let them hold on to Donut for a little bit longer, he's going to be a big factor in the round, but doesn't really get to it. At least then get to continue reinvesting, but once again, one lost round without a bomb plant. Could actually put him in a really tough spot, and that's tough as well. Stare with a lovely double. Yeah, it's beautiful as well. It gets away on two HP just enough to make his escape and now Ents have to go scrambling to try and recover this round completely and they're gonna go searching with some pious on that AWP as he walks on in it's a heavy presence towards middle refresh he misses the head of the first and the second as well some pious gives up his position with that AWP deal with a massive kill there and now some pious completely overlooks that position is there as he will claim another that's his third and Ents must be kind of scratching their head saying he was towards cave a moment ago he got two now he's in the middle and he's got a third where's he going to pop up next they need to be careful of him but his teammates also have a massive threat in this round as well crossfire are going to be set up lonix on the site right now and well the op whizzes by but lonix does not he finds the headshot peeks out onto valde does a little bit of damage Ooh. but beautiful taps as stair does hold it slacks with that awp that does miss the mark and now stair is going to take him down from behind that stairs round he gets four a spark get five yeah that was a good attempt from valda there towards the latter stages in the one versus four but unfortunately for him time was really a bad factor and stair once again just stepping up absolutely massively we're gonna see the replay as well towards middle they had no idea that he was up close that ct side looking really solid right now Finally, you put the economy events into in, in bay a little bit. Well, they can still go for the hero rifle for Madden and a couple pistols. I say a hero rifle, he's already burned down to a crisp. No AK in this round. This is a little bit dangerous, friends. We're kind of seeing a slow start like we did see against Gamer Legion, but they managed to pull that one back. This one might be a little bit more difficult as Lonix can't quite believe that he's lined up three kills, four all in the round. And it's a 6-2 scoreline as he has to move his crosshair very little. A little yeah, bit they just walk in. A little bit of discussion here, so it is going to be a, a tactical call. I can only imagine it is from the from the side of Ents. Well, everything's been going to plan right now for Sprout, right? The CT side's been looking quite solid. Individually as well, they've been delivering. One thing that I actually wanted to speak about in terms of refresh, I feel like people don't really realize how much influence he's had from some of the, you know, best uh, Danish IGLs out there, right? Refresh has been on several different teams. And in different parts of his career, he's played under Kadian, he's played with Hooksy, he's played with Vary in the team, he's played with Rawls, he's played with MSL, he's played with so many different people. And you know, that, that has to have some beneficial influence, right? I mean, he, he's able to get the best out of everyone and, uh, well, 
logically the worst out of them and try and implement it to his own game style, which is sick. His interest in seeing his transition into calling, and well, he's calling an absolute storm Ooh. around the CT side so far, but it helps when Slax is on okay. form like this. He is just being an absolute showstopper out towards A, out towards B. It doesn't really matter. He's 14 and 1, 165 ADR in the first nine rounds from your scout, opera, whatever you want to call him. And it's a 7 2 lead now. Ents really in trouble. Yeah, they that's, one of, the, that's one of the that's one of the best slacks games we've seen. Yeah, I mean we were speaking in the pregame, right? You know, right? we were talking about slacks and Sampias, and we were saying, you know, Sampias is on his A game. You know, we haven't seen too much from slacks because he hasn't been on the on the B stream at all, so we don't know what to expect. I can tell you one thing: I was not expecting this. No, well, this is his best game so far today, right? He is the second lowest rated player on this team. Refresh is the only one that's below him. It's kind of like a rifle show normally, but so far in Ashen, it's just been the slack show. And again, they're up against the pistols. Just a couple tech nines, a single smoke, single Molotov, and one flash in the hands of Snappy. What can you make of it? Stare with a big HG. His bullets will do the rest, though, as the flashes rain on over and it will just rain bodies on that B bomb site, but all the blood being spilt is on that C side. And it's an 8 2 scoreline now that we find ourselves looking at early on in this first half. And they've got 8Ks aplenty. They've got a second timeout called already. So you're thinking that they are running slowly but surely out of opportunities to uh, bring this one back and at least make it close in the first half. But uh, I would stress the fact that it is ancient. So anything can happen on this map. You can't really, you can't really read into it all that much. Yeah, things are going to plan right now for Sprout. I'd imagine that this is a second tactical timeout for Ants right now, right? It we is, spoke yeah. about the Voco coaches, and so he's went for another one. Obviously, he is the only Finnish person left in that Ants team. Surely it's going to be enough for a lot of people to cheer for him at the venue if Ants make it out of the group stage. But Sprout looking really strong right now on the CT side. Once again, reminding all of you at home, Sprout did manage to win their first game here on Ancient in the tournament. They did play against Heat and beat them 16-14. And Heat is normally a really solid Ancient side. We saw what they did against Gamer Legion in their follow-up game. So the majority Danish squad isn't to be overlooked, especially on this map. And Ants, they've been struggling a little bit. Valda once again going to get tagged down early on. No mid-presence whatsoever from Sprout. They're more than happy to let Ants have that. But look at that. They're going to lead B entirely. Okay, Law and X is going to stick around, but they're going to go for a bit of a mid-crunch later on. Sampias does find that opening kill. Siphon's going to trade one back and refreshes this time to swing on true. And he even gets a second with the help of Stare as he survives on 9 HP. And now Ence's two players, two remaining players, are completely split. They're at complete opposite bomb sites. As Madden is going to creep his way up, he's going to be taken down. And now it's just Valde, low HP, 19 to be exact. And. There are two players in the proximity, two players very, very close by that could stop this before it turns into anything at all. But Refresh does go down. And the bomb plant at least secured for Ents in this round. Valde goes for the big reposition in towards Donut. Lonix knows that he can't have crossed all the way back. Nade will go in. Do they realize he's so close? They nearly line up for him. They do line up. They line up for Stair. But yeah. it's not going to matter all that much. Stair takes down both of them, but takes the round for a sprout and takes the round for himself. Yeah, I wanted another multi-kill for the stats. I think he'd already gotten two, by the way. So gets a, gets a third in the end of the day, but Sprout with another round. And even though it was a good idea for Ents, I like the idea for the A split. And, you know, having Madden to lurk over towards B, maybe try and catch uh, Lonex off guard as soon as he starts rotating towards the A bomb side or being a really late lurk once the bomb is down. That re-aggression and the call from Sprout to go for... The four-man crunch towards middle works out perfectly, even though they lose both donut players there. They still manage to fight back. 
least the bomb plant is going to let them reinvest. And the missed shot from Slacks is actually going to give away the whereabout of the AWP. And all of that without really losing a player to gain that intel. Still looking for little snippets of information throughout the map and Refresh is going to go searching here. Might catch Valley with an aid in his hand. He gets gun up, but Refresh is still going to win the duel. Gia swings wide and he is going to get the refrag. Some Pius now gets the better of Slax this time and begins to add a few deaths up to Slax's tally. Somebody had to try and stop him and the man that really had to do it is some Pius. On a glass cannon, making it work. Lonex completely overlooks that angle. Not expecting Madden to be that close at all. Now it's spread down to just two. Ents have worked very hard to get into a round like this. Just need to convert it. Yeah, they don't realize the B bomb side is completely clear. That's going to give enough time to stir to rotate back. But again, he is going to be all alone. If he gets the kill onto Madden, though, this could be a bit of a spanner into the works. And he's got a nice off angle to work with. Snappy, though, completely aware of the possibility he gets the kill. That's going to be the round siphon. Doesn't really get to participate in this one. Going to hold on to the M4. Money is not going to be an issue for Sprout. It looks like it, it could not be an issue for them until the end of the half. Well, especially if they continue saving in those scenarios. But Siphon actually goes for a wide peak and he's going to get dealt with. Obviously, knowing that the team money isn't great either. Decides to go for the maximum damage. The Oper is not going to miss the shot. And that's the second tactical timeout coming in from Sprout. Remember what we spoke about before the start of this game. Both these teams are going to be using their tactical timeouts. Not going to be saving them up whatsoever. And we've seen that already. I think we've had two tactical timeouts from Ents. And now that's the second one for Sprout. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've definitely had two from Ents. So I can tell you that much anyway. A little bit of a discussion happening once again. And just keeping the mood high as well. Just kind of re reassuring themselves, right? I mean, just saying, all right, you know, we're 9-3 up. We've got this. We just need to make sure that we don't let Ents back into the game. Win this next round. We've got double figures. That's a perfect half. A perfect half so far. They'll be looking for a whole lot more. They won't be just settling and resting just yet. Even nine is fine. Ned, not going to do all that much to the Ents players as they try and creep their way up towards B. Lonix playing a little bit of a passive angle here as the T's swing up onto the site and Lonix cannot take advantage of it. Yeah, they've just simplified it massively, right? Just walk up the B-bomb side, try and get a bomb plant out of it. Stair, though, gets a kill through it. He's actually going to jump through. You're a lunatic. Stair gets another. Law and X gets one more. Stair is going to finish off with a third. What's going on? What kind of CS are Sprout playing here? And why do I love it so much? Right. You've heard of synchronized divers, yeah? Do you know those guys? <laughs> right? Synchronized smoke divers because Lonex did exactly the same. There was two of them. Oh my god. What? That is ridiculous. <laughs> Both of them just come through the smokes. Yeah, just say, all right. Yeah, you think yeah, that, you're gonna, that's let's hilarious. Get the plan? And, and it works. It works perfectly. Exactly. Just, you know, so you, can't even, you can't even question it at yeah. all. Did it, you see the face of Snappy? He's so confused on what's happened just now. Yeah. I would be as well. I'd be absolutely oh. fuming, stare. He's going to have to try and watch that one back to realize what happened. It was a very quick re reaction from St. Pius. Siphon is going to get the refrag elsewhere on the map, though. We're back into a fair game, a fair fight. As two players from Ensto looking a little bit worse for wear. Both around half HP. St. Pius might try and pry an entry open. He needs to be careful that he doesn't receive a lot of spam there from Lonix. As the molly goes in, look for the player on that side. Refresh takes the aggression though, down towards the ramp and swings even deeper. This time Valley will punish him for his over aggression. But the damage continues to be outputted on this T side. Not a single player above half HP. They'll make their way towards A. Slax isn't in a position to stop this. Yeah, but now he's going to start moving and he might catch timing onto the player making their way into middle and indeed he will and that's going to give it up surely. 
Madden going down. Slax is going to start going for the run now. He's heard the bomb going down. He can just hold. Just make sure you don't really give them any space to work with whatsoever. He's got the line towards Tempo and A main. And they know that both of them are low on HP. They got Smoke, HE, and Amali as well. So Siphon needs to make sure that stays in play. But Valdi, close by. He is going to be found out by Lonix. Now Sampaius is going to strike with that AWP. He needs a whole lot more. He needs the one versus oh. three. The flick is nasty. And he's looking for oh. it again. The no scope to finish it. Sampaius. That is ridiculous. As he stands tall in Donut. Gives Ents their fourth round. And I, I dare I say it keeps them in the game. That's the massacre of the Opers right now on Ancient. What's going on with both Slacks and Sampaius? Look at that again and again and again. What a shot. That's why you bring him in the lineup. Oh my god, some pious. That is massive. And he does that. Being 8 and 11 after this round. That's a round in which he picked up a triple kill. He was 5 and 11 before this round. What a massive clutch from him. Lonix not ready for Madden. Tucked in that position. Stare. Doesn't realize that he's already crossed, but Slax at least finds that kill to make sure that he won't aggress even further. Refresh. Out towards middle. He is looking for the shoulder of a player peeking, but once he sees it, decides not to overstay his welcome. Knows that he is completely isolated for the minute. Backs away, but still a little bit aggressive on the angle. Hoping that somebody would swing into him, that maybe Siphon could get the refrag. The double up in play for Sprout. And yet to be really found out by the end side. Smoke goes down towards the ramp. Stair is just going to be holding. And maybe waiting for the cross here now. He's tucking away from the flash. He is going to be smoked off, however. Rotations making their way on in. And surely should have a bomb plant here. Unless we see some more synchronized diving through smokes. And Stair well, is we know that like Stair he wants is to. Specialist. He wants to. Oh. Nope, no diving this time around. He's going to wait for the smoke and get one and two. And he seems to know where the third one is as well, or at least have an idea. Snappy is going to snap onto him, though. But it's still one versus three. And refresh, even though he's low on HP, should have his number written down. And indeed, it is going to be slacks right through the wall into the head of Snappy for the 11th round for Sprout in that first half. Really strong showing from Sprout on that CT side. Very, very impressive indeed. Ents, uh, the problems are there with the second half here. Sprout versus Ents, 11 to four. And Sprout now on this T side. Oh, that is not how you want to start a pistol. Oh. A friendly tap. Friendly, there's nothing friendly about that at all. Oh. Love is harsh, love is tough. Especially brother's love. Now, this will make it even more impressive if they're able to convert this round, especially if uh, Refresh is able to find the final few kills. P250 in the hands of Slacks looking to try and take down Snappy of the Julies. He's going to be swarmed here from the CT shirt. Oh, oh. Very messy, but eventually it is Ents coming away with two kills, and it's a 2v2. Refresh and Siphon. Now, going to try and hold on. Refresh finds that headshot onto St. Pius. Gets away to safety for the minute. No, taken down in the back. And now it's a one versus one. Siphon is going to try and spot out Madden. Trying to find his kill. Oh, reload for both. This is so awkward. Uh, and now Madden gets his head it. down. He's just going to stick it. Siphon, you have to it. go peek him. You have to go run at him. Oh, he's going to go for the knife. And he's going to get it. Siphon with another knife. Well, I say another knife. That's the second pistol round in a row in this game that we see an knife in. First half, it was refreshed. Now it's Ipen. There's the money injection. I want to see that once again. That fight towards middle was scrappy. Oh, and well... The only knife that we're going to talk about is going to be Zyphon's knife and Lonix will be wiping the sweat off his forehead that we're not talking about that one because, I mean, if Zyphon loses that 100%, we can have a chat about, you know, if Refresh was full HP, there is a bigger chance in that round, right? Because he got taken down in the back. It was a body shot to take him down, a few bullets from the Julies, but a messy pistol there. And, well, Refresh doesn't seem... Uh, 
too annoyed about it. I'm no, he's not upset. He's quite happy. But ends though, they they don't look great right now. They're in a really tough spot. You know, haven't really been in that spot yet in this tournament, right? I mean, their first game, they were in control most of the time. Even though have were able to bring it closer at one point. Then in the second game, yes, okay, Gamer Legion had the better start in the first half, but it was kind of like a 7-3-esque better start, right? It's not what's going on right now on Ancient. And even though we've switched sides, now you've lost the pistol round. If you lose the conversion, and this is, by the way, this is with Ents winning the pistol and the conversion of the first half as well, let me remind you. But now it's just those boys dominating the pace. And a victory here for Sprout would actually make things so much more interesting in the group, right? I mean, we already have Big that are unbeaten after their first three games taken down. Uh, Heat, Sprout, and Havu. They're currently, by the way, down 3-11 to 11 against Gamer Legion on Overpass. So this is interesting. Uh, Enter 2-0. Sprout are 1-1. One so if Sprout win, both teams are going to be 2-1 and one after this one. And if Gamer Legion beat Big, they're going to be 2-2. Two and two. And we still have a Heat versus Enz and a Heat versus Havu game to be played out. And another Enz game that's going to be against Big as well. Things are going to stay interesting until the end of the day, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like nobody's going to have a clean sweep through the groups, really. Yeah. Unless Big come back from being down 3 to 12. Yeah, unless they do. But Yeah, they're going to be on the CT side of Overpass, so maybe. Well, it is 12 to 3 going into that second half over on the A stream very, very soon. But this second half might really be over before it even starts, especially if Sprout are able to convert this round with relative ease. The pistols do pose a few problems in themselves, but no issues whatsoever for the rifles as they just overwhelm and overpower, and rightly so. 13 to four, Ents are gonna have one go at this, really. And it is gonna be the buy coming in here. I'll have to sacrifice maybe a little bit of weaponry if they want to bring out all the stops in terms of utility, and only two Molotovs on the side events. So if uh, Sprout are able to bait out that utility early on, and then maybe go for a little bit of a pop later, there won't be too much to stop them. Brown, highest rated Sprout player at the Major, by the way. So I was, I was kind of surprised to see him, you know, underperform a little bit here so far in the tournament, but now he's coming back to his own. He was on 1.2 rating in the major games that Sprout did play. Uh, just for for instance, the second highest rated was Stair, and he was on one. So he was he was the best by by a, quite quite the margin, I guess you could say. But now Wens have the guns on their side, and we've seen some crazy comebacks so far this game. Maybe this is going to be another one. As you pointed out, though, money is not really going to be a big issue here for Sprout. And they can afford oh. to go for more smoke diving. Okay, it's there. Oh, okay, it's there. That's fine. That's all the utility gone. Is he the, the new smoke well. criminal? <laughs> He's making a good account for himself. He's making a good claim, really, isn't he? Oh, nearly finds another kill. On to Dia in mid house. As fast, Sprout are going to sprint. Up towards A. Siphon gets into a really strong position as well. He can lock off this part of the map if Dia even thinks about going for a peek. He's going to be in trouble. And by the looks of things, the CTs are not moving. This is a save from Ents. They yeah. have to, they just don't have the money. Do not yeah. have the facilities for it. And it's so it's so disappointing because that was a five versus four until the point where Stair just runs through a smoke and gets a double kill, right? In cave. And that's the round done for. You just rotated everybody back towards the B-bomb side. Ents had no idea that Sprout were going for the last second rotation. It wasn't even a last second rotation. They just decided to rotate through middle, go, go A, and the CTs just felt completely locked out of the round. And that's one of the risks of going for the five M4s as well, right? Because your utility is not going to be great, and you don't really have it if you skip to work with either. So retake would be really tough. 14-4, Ents... One of the teams that we were looking at and thinking that they, they might as well make it through without dropping a single map. Well, Sprout, they showed up here on Ancient. 
and said not today. Ants will lose a map. And at this point, it feels like Ants just need a miracle. Just need something to go your way. That Molly goes in and Dear now realizing that could be an air rush on my hands and he can't stop it at all. Lonix with a big headshot there. Valley looking for a double spray. Only gets one. Siphon with a refrag. A very important one in terms of sprouts around. But are they aware that some Pius is as close? Now they definitely are. The flash goes in. Another player on the other side of Dawn at the Slacks needs to be cautious of. He's not going to be. Overlooks it. And that costs him his life. And ultimately, the round as well for Sprout. And they do survive picking up one. But you feel that a 14-5 scoreline is a very, very difficult one to overturn. Sprout still with a few timeouts in the bank. And they are going to call upon one of those time banks right now. 30 seconds to have a little bit of a discussion how they want to attack this next boy round. Yeah, and if, if you look at ends right now, you don't feel like it's impossible for them to win all those rounds, especially on the CT side of Ancient. We know that they can build up the momentum. What What is the problem here? And what could be the problem is the fact that Sprout are so close to that 15 mark, right? You just need one hero around. You just need one nice set piece with the pistols to work out and ends are going to be a no man's land. That's the problem right now. It's not like they can't win those consecutive rounds on the defense. It's not like they ca they can't build up the momentum. It's the fact that you know you need to win so many rounds in a row and you can win eight, you can win seven rounds in a row. You lose one and Sprout are up on 15 and they have guaranteed overtime at least. You still gotta start somewhere though. Yeah, you do. You really have to start somewhere, and the start of this round has started very well. Open and kill found from Valdin. There won't play any further part in this one. He's going to be wishing his teammates on. As Slacks misses the mark with the AWP, and that's going to cost him. Madden through the smoke, big HE to tag down, refresh, and it's snappy through the smoke once again. I actually think every single kill so far this round has been through a smoke. And yeah. well, as the smoke clears, Valde gets the better Zyphon, and refresh goes down through a wall. So, through a smoke, through a wall for four of the kills, and I mean, we could probably count the fourth one there as well, considering it was just fading. Yeah, that's a great round there for Ants. Just shutting them down completely. It's gonna help them out to build up the confidence as well, right? When you're going when you're opting to go for such kind of a long and well exhausting comeback from time to time. Uh you want to be dominant at least in the opening rounds. If you're just getting the clutches, you're gonna feel like you're a little bit off the mark and you're not really gonna feel too solid in your position, but right now you're up against only one AK, a couple of graded pistols. Your money is starting to look a little bit better as well. And you can tell that Sprout hope that Ants are going to get aggressive towards lane and then they could probably surprise them with the flash, but nothing like it happening from the CT side. That's why Sprout will even deny that play or at least cancel it. Make sure that Slacks can actually utilize that flash and catch somebody potentially. Send someone to the white land. I just came up with that one. Not bad, not bad. Not one of your, not one of your best, not one of your worst, though. Yeah. Either. I just thought about the picture, you know, the, the ones that you see on Twitter with somebody just having their entire face white. Yeah. Yeah, the white land. Just when you, you see the flash pop in front of your eyes and it's just the, uh, the pearly gates. Yeah, know, it's even yeah, more hilarious when it's when it's someone that's playing really up close to their monitor, right? You know, a e. Kinder or Rob's esque yeah, person. Yeah. Because when they get flashed, it's just white. Their entire face is white. You can't really see their face. You just see the silhouette of it. That's the definition of being flashed. Back on the buy here for Sprout, as that hero rifle didn't really bear many fruits at all. As, ooh, is Slack's gonna go through this smoke? Yes, he is. Now, needs to be careful. There's an op on the other side. That's gonna be some pious. So, oh, doesn't react in time and nearly cost him his life. Not able to flick up and take away the life of another. 
but down to 28 HP goes for that reposition and this is something that Sprout needs to be really cautious of now the rotation has heavily come over to this A bomb site and Sprout have decided mm, yeah probably not the best option to go in now we're just going to leave Siphon boosted up and we're going to see if anybody walks right into him and that's exactly what's going to happen but the uh, very clever knows that that might be the case and the opening kill goes the way of ends yeah, Stair gets spotted here. Needs to be careful. He needs to stay alive. Refresh is going to find a one for one towards middle. That's actually going to open up some space for the T's, but it means that Stair kind of feels pressured to take that fight to enable that B side as an option. But him going down is going to put or throw a spanner into the works. Refresh still manages to fight back again, but they will have to go past that AWP of San Pais, and he hasn't really been missing all that much. Yeah, the issue is Lonix is very close though, and Sampaius might be aware. Oh, well, now he's definitely aware. He finds refresh, Ooh. finds the second as well. And the timing just this time doesn't work out in the favor of Sprout. And Sampaius can count himself a little bit, uh, a little bit lucky in that regard that it didn't go wrong for him there. And well, a fourth and final timeout called from. Barry and his merry men. Fourteen to eight. This game's starting to look interesting. There's another how by coming in for the Sprout boys, and now there's gonna start being some discussion discussions made. Obviously, we spoke about Barry. There isn't a better man for the occasion, right? He's been in those scenarios numerous times. He is a guy that knows how to bounce back. You know, things are going against him. On the other side, though, you have a really momentum, a really heavily momentum driven squad events that knows how to bounce back in games like that as well, especially when things start going well for them. Individuals start performing, they start getting multi kills. A lot of these rounds haven't really been that close either, as well, which is going to play a massive role. Last thing you want right now is. To know that ends are enjoying their stay in the server. Well, they're definitely not enjoying it right now. Might enjoy it a whole lot more if they're able to get over this little small hurdle. Sampaius passes the first test. Smoke will go down towards Dona. And Dia tries to get in front of it. That's going to cost him his life. As now. Lonex tries to cross with the bomb, but unable to do so just yet. The AKs are making sure of that Siphon with another nice deagle shot, and maybe, just maybe, there is a snowball's chance in this one, Ooh. especially if Siphon keeps hitting shots like that. Looking for a little bit more, looking for Valde. He misses, eventually has to reload, and there just isn't enough bullets. But Stair rolls into town with a full clip, and he might catch a player in the back. Valde is down, looking for some pious. The last smoke goes in. He's going to creep his way past over the top. No way. Spots the opera. Missed shot. Panic sets in and drops away to safety of the smoke. Oh Swings out God. wide. St. Pius has missed and Stair will not. He will grab that chance with both hands himself and Zyphon. The devilish eagles. Oh, that was so crisp. The two Danes step it up in the end. Look at that from Zyphon. The first kill. The second one is mental. You have one bullet to connect. Otherwise, you're dead, man. And even the one versus two clutch from Stair, the first one on to Valde, and then the second one, AWP in the hands of St. Pais. What a way to bounce back, Sprout. They go for another tactical timeout here. They realize that this is going to be their best I chance to close out this game. I think it's an Ants one. The Sprout are out. It's definitely an Ants tactical timeout. Okay, yeah. Bob. It does make sense. You know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they went for attack in, in that <laughs> precise moment. We're still seeing that Madden's having a fun time. I mean, he's laughing about it, but uh, his teammates are not having the best time of their lives in the server right now. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, after losing around like that, I don't think a lot of people would be best pleased. 15 yeah. to 8 now. Sprout have a really good opportunity. This would put them 2 and 1 in this group and it would also put Ensign 2 and 1 would really open things up and spice things up in the race for you know the second and third spot and uh, over on the A stream bigger beginning to bring it back a little bit as well so you know it's definitely heating up in this group A don't get me wrong with that one starting things off though 
Hence, find that opening kill. It's some bias with that AWP to connect on his man. And spread down to just four. Yeah, Vaud is going to get aggressive towards middle once again. He wants to save that part of the map. He needs to be careful, though. There's four people on the other side of the smoke. He's still got some support, though, from Madden and Snappy coming in from the heavens. This should be just Sprout walking into the meat grinder here. It should be. Flash goes over. Madden completely blind. Oh my refresh God. Refresh and Lomax did find the double. Madden, he's absolutely no help at all. He was completely blind. He's seen the flash as well, but just didn't react to it. Didn't turn from it. And eventually he is going to swing out. Oh, refreshes nade, takes out Lomax. Oh, that's so messy. A big HE there as well. Just chips away at Stair's health, but won't take him down. As ends, they do have a massive HP advantage. And well, Sprout, they're going right into the rifle. That's going to be D. How one kill might be more than enough. Looking towards Donna for the second player. No idea. The stairs crept his way out, but he makes noise, swings out wide, and eventually some bias <laughs> is going to be there. I was wondering what was happening on D's screen. Just didn't react at all, but wanted to play his life until some bias arrived, and he did in the nick of time. Yeah, what a massive play that is from Adam, by the way. If he doesn't get that one kill, he actually kills Refresh, who had a nade, and then the nade drops off the body of Refresh and drops one of his teammates as well. So that's technically a double kill for Madden, if you look at it like that. But that was really scary, because Ents had the perfect setup to deal with the occasion, and it was just one flash that Sprout needed to undo it and take down both Vauda and Snappy. Madden stepping it up to keep them in the game. The half bike coming in through for the T side. They're going to try to pick up the pace. A lot of utility damage done in the process, and if that wasn't enough, it's going to be Snappy with the double kill to shut down both Refresh and Slacks. Yeah, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. And we'll get a 10 surely as long as they manage to take down the Deagles and don't fall to around like this once again. Well, it's a 2v4 now, so two v surely four. they managed to convert it. Yeah, and they do. You never know. You always have to give the chance. You always you have to what? give I, the I chance. You know what? I don't like it when right? you're trying to play with my heart rate. A two I'm, versus five not, like that. Look, I'm not the one in the server, all right? I'm not the... I'm neither of the, you know, the that, 10 players that, in the that's server. That's a true right? point. Both yeah. Slacks and some players have been doing some mad moves so far on this map. It's not Those are two for the highlight reels, you know? You know, if it was me, it'd be already over. Because it'd be a 16-0 to the other team. Yeah, that's a fair point. Well, Although, I, I, I think you... You got the brains, at least. <laughs> it's just the mechanics letting me down. I appreciate that very much. Well, the That's brains right. and the mechanics on show in this server once again. And well, let's see what the brain of Sprout has conjured up in this one, as it looks like it's a little bit of an A play called from Refresh. But some counter utility has discouraged that thought. And it looks like other options will now be explored by the T's once again. Some Pius with this AWP might look to try and find this kill onto Zyphon, the tag. Sadly, no frag. So yet to see the first casualty in this 26th round. Yeah, a bit slower. The early utility towards the A-bomb side made Sprout reconsider. And they've actually reconsidered, but look at the rotations. Ants have moved so many pieces towards that A-bomb side and towards the owner, so... Uh, sooner or later, they will have to go for a bit of an aggressive move, and timing is going to be everything. They're going straight over towards middle, and this is exactly where Sprout are headed as well. Refresh is going to pick up the first one, and indeed he's going to get a second. Sampias manages to fight back with one more, but Zyphon's already up close. Now, down to just two. Ents need to try and stop this. The Molly comes in, and Valde has to tuck himself away to safety. Can't afford to stay and fight with that one. Here comes the swing from Snappy. Bomb is going to be planted as Snappy does find the first kill. They know exactly where Valde was, but he gets it into a 1v1. Lonix off the bomb. He looks for Stair. He's clearing at the close angles. Nearly oh. overlooks it, but doesn't in the end. 13 HP. It's enough for 11 rounds as Valde takes it down. And Ents now survive once again. Again, oh, 15 I, oh. to 11. What a clutch from Valda. 
he needed to deliver here. And that's why you have him on the team, right? You have a person like him, not because he's going to be dropping those crazy 30 and 7, 30 and 10 games on the rifle, but because he's going to keep his calm in rounds like that and he's going to deliver a kill when he absolutely needs to. And they stay alive here for at least a couple more. Still, a lot of these half bites have proven to be quite dangerous here for Sprout. So maybe the pistols and the rifles is what they need, but look at the amount of utility towards Ram to make sure that there's nothing quick happening from the T side. And they're trying to take every single precaution in the world here. Yeah, just a very good countermeasure, right? I mean, just get the mollies down, make sure that if they're going through it, they have to waste some of the utility. Get the smokes down, you know, if there's even are going through the smokes, there's HEs going on top of it. It's just not a nice place to be if you're a T at all. And a lot of map control taken from Ents. So right now, they will just be waiting. The retake flash should come in very shortly. Yeah, and they just have the Karakin flash lined up. There you go, the spam through the smoke does a lot of damage. But Madden is still alone towards the back of the site. And he won't be cleared out, not just yet. Finds that first kill, swinging through the smoke. And surely this is just a clean up crew right now for Ents. And that's exactly what is going to happen. They mop up that B bomb site once again. And it's, it's 12 now for the Ents boys, bringing it back. Three rounds, the difference. Looking to force an OT, I believe. Actually, I was going to say we haven't seen an OT. We haven't seen an OT on the B stream. We see yeah. one on the A stream in a, in a big game. Yeah, it was a big game between Havo and Big. I do agree on that. I mean, it was a it was a 1915 in favor of Big, right? On Mirage. Yes, I think so. Yeah, you got to feel a little bit sorry for the Havo boys. They've been able to bring their game so close, but they've just been losing to everybody. Well, out towards middle, Dia finds a quick double. It's been a quiet game from him so far, but it's been a very loud Ooh. round as he pretty much shuts it down all in his own. Yo. And now swaps over to the Tech 9, looking for maybe final player. But Stair catches him by surprise. But still, surely no way back into a round like this. Not at all. No idea where the rest of the CT is ironed. Even if he did, just unfavorable fights everywhere he is gonna go especially in towards cave now he has made a step that's been heard they just lie ready and waiting for him to walk on in and snappy's gonna take him down but a, a massive round from dia that puts him on 12 kills he was on eight at the start of that round and you know he hasn't had very much to do or when it, uh, you know the the kills have presented himself to him he hasn't been able to to show up he hasn't been able to hit them but in such an important round he comes up good yeah paul and sprite right there an ex-sprout player as well right he was a part of sprout before he joined ends in 2021 and he is alongside snappy one of the oldest members of of this lineup and you know in the beginning a lot of people were thinking that he doesn't really have a place in you know a so-called super team especially an international one and not strictly a polish one but with time, he's proven himself to be quite a useful asset to the Ants team and now has grown up to be one of the more or the most reliable players in the lineup. Another round where Ants don't really get a bomb plan either, so back to the pistols we go. And the scout from Slacks, which we know how dangerous it could be, but this time there's an AWP on the other side to take him down. Yeah, some players get tagged up by that scout though, so... He needs to be a little bit cautious. Lonix has recovered the scout as well. But Sprout disengaged from that one completely. Regardless of what happens here, you know, even if they do lose it, this is just a round that you kind of building up your money. They're playing for that round 30, of course. That HG chips away at refresh and siphon nicely. But still chances in a round like this for Sprout. Not to be yeah. overlooked by Hens. 
Yeah, but still, the stance from Mance is really good, right? They've just opened up a lot of space. They're just holding, being really passive. You can see how every single one of them is on the side of the CT spawn there. Nobody really going for aggressive peaks, and Valda once again is going to find a double kill. Lonex still manages to drop one on the Deagle, but this one will require some magic here if the T's want to make anything out of it. Well, a couple of kills is not really going to be that magical. Stair needs to go for the run. Time is not on his side. And the CT on the other side, they can just try. And when time, Madden gets the kill. 14 on the board. Ends just one away from sending us into overtime. And look at that blue line, Jack. That was a 14 and 4 game. It's now 15 and 14. We said it in the beginning. This would be one of the more of the most spectacular comebacks we've ever had in the Elisa tournaments. Not only here in this tournament, but ever. It's a 14 for Ents being on, well, really tough conditions with a couple really close rounds. One versus one in the mix as well, but now they're just one away. Be a tough place to lose it, right? After bringing it this close and bringing it back, you know, to get so close, but yet so far, they need to make sure that that doesn't happen. As yeah, a bit of a younger team happens sometimes, the struggle to close out your games, especially when you're playing on the most city side of the map and you're on the offense. We spoke about the momentum that ends could bring into a game like that, and surely they have. Final round, fi final chance. We're proud to close it out. Laid control over middle. No one really being occupied with that part of the map from ends. And it looks like this one is gonna just spiral out into a bit of a split. Haven't really made up their mind yet though. You still have stair that's lurking towards the ramp area. And a couple of T's will try and walk into CT spawn snap. He gets that kill and that's gonna give them all the information. Now they need to go. They can just split here, they can just split out towards A if they want, but they're being put under pressure here towards CT and they're maybe considering do we stay or do we go. Siphon with a big headshot there onto Valdez. Some pious pushes past, tries to catch the bomb out, needs to make sure that the bomb does not go down. Dia though, anchoring the backside, gets a quick double and there's a massive chance for Ens in this round now. Refresh puts the bomb down as stacks with that AWP. He's not going to be able to hold for his teammate. Now he scopes on in, flash blinds him completely we've seen a one versus three from this position from some pious earlier on in the game and now massive shot into the first looking for the second oh, oh the tag from some pious is going to scare slacks a little bit now some pious runs him down defuse pulled off and ends send us out see what a comeback from ends they were down four and 14 and we were already starting to speak about what would happen in the group if sprout were able to close this one out right that was supposed to be a done deal but no it is the comeback, Jack. It is Ants bringing it back all the way from being down 10 rounds on the CT side of Ancient. And I believe we have... Uh, okay, we don't have a short break. We're actually running straight back into the server for the start of the overtime. And now my question towards you, by the way. Are Sprout going to be able to actually recover now? Because you know the unwritten rule that the team that actually needs one round to close out the game as soon as it goes into overtime they start winning rounds you think that's gonna happen oh i don't know i don't know it's very difficult to say starting off this round though slacks finds that opening kill at the awp it's a bit aggressive from snappy out through that smoke and well slacks unable to find a trade onto onto Zyphon as Sprout will try and force Snappy back, and they have done so with utility and spam alike. Stair lining up the pre fire, but nobody home on that one. And we still yeah. move into a 4v4. It looks like we're going to see a little bit of aggression here from Ents. They're going to fade this smoke and try and walk down the ramp and try and catch Lonix off. Guard Stair was got out by this aggression in the previous round. Might just happen once again, but Lonex takes a little bit of damage, Snappy disengages, and rightly so. Yeah, they still have three defenders towards the back of the B bomb side, though, so they want Sprout to commit to that play. They're trying to lure them in, and this kill from Stair might actually initiate the play. Oh, Lonex with another. It's down to just two. Some Pius misses the shot, takes a lot of damage as well, has to retreat to safety, and just about gets away. 
But the reposition might be good enough. He is going to be smoked off. Rattles off a shot through it. And decides maybe to back away. The save actually might be on the cards here as well. Let's not forget. The AWP purchase is a massive purchase in this one. Let's do it. Might try and stop this bomb plant now. Through the smoke. Oh. He has got two. How has that happened? You criminal. Both there and refresh out of the round now. Some pay is still low on HP, but Slax is gonna drop Dia no more for him. And surely this is a sealed deal. Some Pais, he just needs to fall back. He's actually gonna go looking right now. Realizes it's a one versus two. Money. Not really gonna be an issue. Tries to go for the pre-aim onto Slax, but the German Oper is gonna be quick enough to take him down. 16 on the board for Sprout. And I can tell you what's going through their minds right now. Couldn't have this happened in regulation. We had so many chances to close the game, and as soon as it goes into overtime, we get one. But, you know, this is something that happens quite a lot, and it's because of the pressure that's building up when you realize that there's the prospect of you actually fumbling after being in such a good position, right? And as soon as the game goes into overtime, you're like, okay, screw that. We just play at this point. It's just a massive pressure relief. Lonix started off nicely in this round once again. He is going to put a stop to him, though. Easy peeks a little bit wide. Snappy has pushed all the way through, and he's found stair. So realizing that it's not B, they need to be ready for what is about to happen towards A. And Sampias is very ready. Posted on that angle. Make sure that Slacks does not get past. And it's down to just siphon and refresh the two Danes once again. are going to try and rescue this round. But Ants might have just done enough. To tie it up once again. Refresh. Trying to get into a position where he's not going to be spotted by that jump spot. While also clearing out the angles towards Donut. And everybody from Ents is happy just sitting in CT and playing for this kind of retake scenario. But eventually, they're going to have to make an information play. And if timing doesn't favor them, this oh. could be a problem. They're not going to check yeah. it. Yeah, they have no clue that they're towards Donut. But surely the T's don't realize it. Oh, D has saw him. But it's a 4 by 3 He actually didn't. The Molotov is going to confirm it. Now that's going to be really awkward for Ants to realize, but surely Sprout they're not ready for them to be so quick behind them. Oh, Refresh turns around. Finds that kill. Is he expecting the second? No yes, way. he is. Big headshot as well. Bomb yet to be planted, though. Bomb is going to be tapped. So players thinking about going on. True. No way. Oh, true to smoke. But in the meantime, Refresh has found another. And eventually, Refresh is just going to have to stick it. Three kills already. The opera is the only one that remains. And in oh. the smoke, hits the no-scope. Sampias, when you need him to clutch, he is there. Oh, he's turned up once again. The double non-scope as well. The first one threw, even threw the box on the bomb side. What a round from Ants. But that one, that was, that one was supposed to be an Ants round, right? I mean, in a four versus two, such a fortunate timing for Sprout. Refresh turning around, getting that double kill onto middle. That was crazy. And then even collecting the third soul towards the end of it. But it's Empires to once again step it up with the AWP when it matters the most. He's delivered the Iberian Oper. Events showing his worth in diamonds so far on this map. We still remember that crazy clutch that he had. As well towards the A-bomb side. 16-16, we're leveled up. Valda once again aggressive towards middle. Not really going to be able to find a kill just yet. And actually he's going to get dealt with. Dia is completely isolated here for the moment. The molly down makes means that nobody can kind of push past it. Sampias is thinking about it, but Smoke will extinguish it, and Dia doesn't know where to look, and eventually looks nowhere, and Lonix will take him down. Nice little reposition as he waits for somebody to exit the temple of Sprout in a really good post plan situation, and they've got a lot of control pretty much everywhere. They've got a late lurk in mid-house as well, should they need it. Refresh on the site is going to get overwhelmed by Madden. Lonic peeks out. Sampias needs to clear him off this, but gives away his position early on. But baits him into the shot, and he will find that kill. But now here comes Siphon creeping in behind. Smoke is going to go down. Siphon gets the first look for the second. Sampias turns around. Just needs to connect on this. Slacks, but Slacks with the leg and the Tech 9. It's going to be more than enough to give Sprite 17. 
Oh my god, Sprout, they get two rounds on the T side after everything. And once again, it had to be some highest in the clutch, but at this point, you just want too much from him. He's been having a really good game, especially in those close moments. Snappy still top of the server alongside Lonix. And Slax, I believe. Oh no, it was Stare, actually. The other one on 26 kills. There's the replay as well. Lonix, that move towards the top of the boost. You pointed that one out. That's a crazy post plan maneuver. Xiphon. Wild that he doesn't get that kill, but it's still Slax able to finish it off. 17-16. Sprout, they weren't able to do it in regulation, but now they need to win only two rounds on the CT side here to get the victory. Slacks towards A with the AWP and he might be tested very early on. Massive HG onto D, down to just 45 as the onslaught comes out towards A, but Slacks is gonna miss and that's gonna cost him his life. Refresh gets only one. Oh, look at that. oh he's gonna be over. They're not gonna take him. They're not gonna check him at all, and he gets three. Oh. Maybe a fourth as well. Runs out of bullets. Snappy takes him down, but the swing through the smoke from Lonix is enough. There's 18 for Sprout, and there's a map point. Oh, the information play. No, it, it wasn't even the information play. The bait was absolutely perfect. It was just the trigger discipline. Gets two kills. He doesn't need more in that scenario. What a play that was. Even though the AWP of Slags just falls down after the first kill straight away and misses his chances there, they were just able to bounce back. And apparently there are still technical difficulties right now. And Mr. Tech Support Slags is going to help out his teammates. He knows exactly what's going on, both in and outside of the server. But Sprout now just one round away from making it all work. And I know it feels like it was an eternity ago when Sprout were actually dominating on the CT side, but now we're back in the same position. They have two consecutive map points, but they're on the defense. It's not the T side. They just need to make it work. They've been so good on the defensive side of things. And look at the team effort as well. Everyone on the side of Sprout is in between seven kills. Lonix, top of the board, 27. Stare on 26. Slacks on 24. Refresh on 22. And Xiphon on 20. Ants need a hero. And they need him rather quick. Indeed they do. And I mean, a little bit of an update for you guys. Over on the A stream, big have lost 16-14 to Gamer Legion. So they pick up their second victory. They're now 2-2. Two and two. That puts Big 3-1. and one. So if Ents were able to bring this back and convert it, they would still be the only unbeaten team left in Group A. But it's looking like it might be a little bit too far out of the question. As they set up for... A little bit of a B-pop, a little bit of a B-play, but there's going to be four players trying to defend. Two from the laneway, not able to stop them initially right now as the smoke's rain on the site. Stair looking up to the heavens. Eventually, he's going to have to bring himself back down to earth and look towards Madden. Gets that kill. Lonix through the smoke finds three, and it's refresh with the last, and it's Sprout with the victory. Oh, of course it had to be done like that. It could have been so much easier for the Sprout boys, but they let Enz back. That was a 14-4 lead for Sprout at one point, but Enz, they managed to bring it back.